Today on the podcast, I'm sharing something really close to my heart. And this transcends business a little bit. It's more on the mindset and personal development side of things and where my lessons really come from when it comes to this mindset-based approach. You see, you may not know, but I had some very serious issues with mental health in my early teenage years. I used to go out every weekend, take as many drugs as I could possibly get into my system, and I eventually gave myself psychosis, where I was heavily medicated for psychotic splits. Now, everything that I do in business today and the way that I show up, the people that I help, it all comes back to these really painful moments that I had to overcome in my life. And I believe as entrepreneurs, we're trying to give our suffering meaning in the world. We are trying to help others to rise. We're trying to bring synthesis to our voids. We're trying to fill our voids with value. And it's through helping and mentoring others that I really believe life takes its highest form of meaning. So today on the podcast, I share some of the interactions that I've had with my mentors that have given me the biggest breakthroughs and always, always give me my reason why. I'll never forget what these specific people have done for me uh, throughout my life. Now, we dive into something called the hero's journey on this episode. Maybe you've heard of this before. Maybe this is new to you. But what we're going to do is we're going to weave in mythology, story, and personal story in your marketing and show you how to share stories with your audience in a way that's authentic, in a way that brings essence into your marketing and your business and will create a blue ocean for you. Now, if you love this episode, grab a copy of my book. You can claim it for free. I go very deep into the hero's journey, into mindset, even more into my story inside my book, you can claim it for free right now. It's at benslatersbook.com. That's benslatersbook.com. All you need to do is cover the shipping and I will ship it to you anywhere in the world. Currently, we have readers from all over the world and I love spreading the message and allowing more people to scale their income, their profits, and their lives as well. So let's dive in. So what do Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, Game of Thrones, most Disney movies, and just about any other Hollywood blockbuster that you can think of have in common? Now, most people don't know this, but they actually follow the same arc, the same story arc. In the beginning, there is usually an issue with the father then or the figure of authority. Then what happens is there is a call to adventure or something changes in the dialogue or the the scenes where there's this invitation, this moment where they get to choose to go on this quest. And then from there, everything starts to descend into the underworld, we could say, or things start to get a little bit stranger. We start to enter into these new fantasy worlds in terms of Harry Potter or Game of Thrones and things like this. Now, this sequence eventually, after it crashes down the bottom, it starts to round up the top. And typically around this time, we meet the mentor or the mentor gives us a special aid. And we take that aid and we start ascending. And we move through our atonement and our challenges and we pass these tests. And then there comes a point where we actually have to cross back from the unknown world back into the known world to own the gifts or share the boon with others. Now, if you break that down, you will see that that structure is playing out across all of these different movies. And it's funny because... You could say, well, the thing that they have in common is they're the highest grossing movie, story, book franchises that have ever existed. Yet, I would say that the thing that is actually driving that value is their ability to share what's called the hero's path or the hero's journey. 
Now, there was a man called Joseph Campbell, and Joseph Campbell was a mythologist, and he studied myths from all around the world. So, he studied Chinese myths and Asian myths from around that area. He studied Inuit myths from Alaska and myths from every single corner of the world, the Incans, the South Americans, every single culture, every single myth that he could find, he studied them. And what he found was that they were also telling this hero's path, which is a really, I guess, shocking implication as these cultures aren't typically known to be connected, yet they're sharing a story or an arc that seems to be connected to our very nature. And that, I think, is a really, it's just quite shocking, to be honest. The first time I saw that, I was just really couldn't believe that that was the way that these myths that people had often thought to be fairy tales and things that had no essence behind them were were charged with essence, were charged with this connection between all of them. And even further to this, Joseph Campbell stated that we were all on this path and that the reason that all these cultures were sharing it was because it was part of our spiritual journey is that we go through these cycles in our own lives. And the reason why we love them on the outside in books and stories in myths and franchises is because it matches the nature of the journey that we're in. When we're sitting in the movie theater and we look up and we see Frodo uh, throw the ring into the fire, or we see him getting chased by these dark characters There is a level of that that connects with something in our journey and a memory or a story that we are facing. And it's that reason why we have this connection to these storylines. Now, when I started to learn this, I started to think, and there's a great quote. It's from a man called Hermes Tresmegatus. He was an ancient Egyptian sage. And he said that once you begin to step foot on the path, you will see it everywhere. And from my life, from that moment, I really started to think. Now, I went back and said, okay, well, if this is true, let me go back into my life. And I looked and I found all of these specific stages. And I'd like to take you through them really quickly. So, when I was about 16 years old, I had some financial issues at home. And for me... I never had to really worry about anything financially up until that point. My dad was really successful in business and he went through a bit of a crisis. There was some uh, mistake that he'd made in the business and an issue with uh, the law and all of this stuff just came crashing down. And right around that point, I had moved from a really small school to a much bigger school with about 350 children in my grade or kids in my grade versus the one I was at previously was there was only 30 people. Now, at that time in my life, everything just changed so drastically for me, except we were going through all this hardship at home. So, you know, I wanted to enter into this new environment. Everything was so new and awesome for me. There was girls and parties and all of these amazing things were happening in my life. And the social was just really exploding. But at the same time, the family life at home was so challenging and difficult and different from what I'd experienced before. And I didn't have the wisdom or the strength to face that at that age. So what I started to do is I actually started to smoke marijuana and smoke a lot of marijuana and drink a lot of alcohol. And that eventually led me into taking a lot of party drugs. And I did that for a fair few years. And it wasn't until many, many years later that I was able to look back and see the journey that I had been on to get there. But I had this growing social unease that started rising up in me at that time. And I was never a social person. You see, I was very, very outgoing. A lot of friends was going out every weekend, just was always involved in it. You know, I was always trying to drive the the energy forward, you could say. And I just felt this thing come up from me, inside of me. And it was this social anxiety that I started getting when I was on drugs. 
And slowly, this was like a snowball kind of coming down the hill. Eventually, that started to build momentum. And every week, it got worse and worse and worse. And eventually, I I had what you would call a psychotic split. I started hallucinating and seeing people and things that weren't there. I entered into this version of reality that was extremely dark and very, very, very painful. And I had close to 20 separate severe psychotic episodes that have been some of the most painful experiences of my life to this day, uh, for sure. There's there's nothing that really in, that I've experienced so far in my life that comes close to that because you've gone your whole life seeing, feeling, hearing, touching and tasting everything that you've perceived through your senses is real. And all of a sudden, that's not the case anymore. And you're having conversations with people and you have to try and distinguish between what's real and what's not, but you still feel everything so fully. And because you're so paranoid, anything that you think can literally just come into your reality like a dream. And there's no boundaries between you and any object anymore and everything just feels so vulnerable and raw and the reason that i had those problems was because i had developed this ego that thought that i could do whatever i wanted and that's why i just kept taking more and more and more drugs but on the inside i think i was really suffering it's like i projected this person that didn't care but on the inside i was so empty and was losing my health and and a lot of other things in my life So I really crashed, like I hit rock bottom. I couldn't really even go outside anymore. That was how bad it was without, I remember the the day that everything really shifted for me was when I I went to a family function and I'd had two quite severe psychotic episodes the two weeks before this. And I sat down with my family and I was completely sober at this stage. And I remember I started to have a psychotic episode when I was there. Uh, around all of my family and that was the moment for me where I really knew that I had fucked something up bad because for me in that moment I could always rationalize these experiences over to the drugs but when it started to happen when I was sober that's like a, a real yeah that was the breakdown for me and I remember I walked downstairs one day at my old house and I just broke down to my mum And I just told her everything. I said, I've been taking a hell of a lot of drugs. This is what I've been experiencing. I don't, I'm not in a good place and I need help. And a few weeks later, I was sitting across from the psychiatrist. And the psychiatrist looked at me and said, Ben, you need to be heavily medicated because you've got a chemical imbalance in your brain and you've got to be medicated for the rest of your life. And I remember thinking in that moment just how bullshit that was. Because for me, my journey into issues with my mental health was my responsibility in that I could feel this social growing unease. And it's almost like my whole body and my mind were revolting against what I was doing and were telling me to stop. And then I was to be heavily medicated for the rest of my life. That seems so fixed because I felt like I was on a spectrum and in a spectrum And I wasn't meant to be stuck there for the rest of my life. And it didn't resonate with me. So I kept taking my medication. I was on that for a couple of years from the ages around 19 years old, around 19, 20, till about uh, 21, around there. At that time, I had a mentor step into my life and everything changed on a dime for me after that. I met a man, his name was Lachlan Cameron, and Lachlan, just by the good of his heart, came into my life, and he started to ask me some fantastic questions. And the first, one of the first things that Lachlan ever asked me was, Ben, what's the worst thing that's ever happened to you? And I remember, no one had ever asked me a question like that before. And I remember thinking about it, and I said, well, actually, it was quite recently, and I spoke him through a recent and very, very severe psychotic episode that I had that lasted for, you know, quite a few hours and it was very painful for me. And the next question, he said, 
And how has that been of benefit to you? And I remember in that moment, my jaw kind of dropped because everyone that I was speaking to about this thing, that there was that question just floored me. And it took me a few seconds to kind of gather myself. And one by one, I started to make new connections that I'd never made before. First thing that came out of my mouth was, Lachlan, actually, the only thing that makes my anxiety go away is when I train my body. I'm spending like two, three, maybe even four hours in the gym every day. Because if I don't do that, I'm not feeling good. He says, all right, sounds pretty good. And I said, well, yeah, and socially, I'm not hanging out with the same people that I was before. I'm not taking drugs anymore because I can't do that anymore. And he said, well, that sounds positive. I said, yeah. And he said, what about your family? You mentioned something about your family. And I said, yeah, my brother and my mum really pulled together to help me through that time. And I felt so grateful to them for being able to hold space. So I'm just going around and I'm just noticing all the major areas of my life were shifting. And finances. I'd started to save money. I wasn't out spending all my money on drugs. With my career, I'd actually moved out of a job that I didn't like, landscape laboring, where I just had to think for literally 8 to 12 hours on all these episodes and just literally just go through them with a fine-tooth comb to try and figure out what's going on. And I'd moved out of that to a job that I'd actually preferred. So I felt like I was moving forwards there. And then with the intellect, I said, Lachlan, I'm learning more than I ever have and I've only just met you and you've asked me these questions. And that was the moment where I actually realized that everything I'd been through didn't happen to me or that it happened for me. And a few days after that, I grabbed my medication and I threw it in the bin. And I never took it again. And it's funny, it's the power of a question, one question to completely change the course of a person's life forever. I have been moving forwards in my life. I do have moments where I take one step back, but on average, I've been moving forwards every single day since that moment. And it was from one question. And Lachlan wasn't done just yet. He would keep following up with question after question after question. He questioned what I was doing at uni and if it was aligned to what I wanted to do with my life. So I changed that. He questioned, do you want to start your own business or do you want to work with someone else? So I started my own business. Now I look back on that. That was seven years ago. And that very discovery that I made in that moment of... Your biggest challenge in life can become your biggest breakthrough. Builds the whole very essence of everything that I do. And I never forget that. It builds the essence of me wanting to help and mentor other people. In business and in life, because I know the power of a question to to completely change everything for a person. And I want to pass that torch so it gives me the power and everything that I need, any time that I, th- I waver, any time that I forget why I'm doing what I'm doing, I think back to that moment. And then I forecast my life to today and I imagine where I would be if I had not met that man. I imagine where I would be if he didn't have the courage to ask me that question that no one was asking. And you see, I never get imposter syndrome. I never feel loss. I never cower down to responsibility because I feel like it's my journey and I'm not honoring my story. I'm not honoring myself if I don't own that and step into that. So that's a tool for me uh, that I've discovered. And second to that, those areas of life that I went through, health, social, family, finance, career, intellect, They have now formed the bedrock for my broad agenda of life. You see, I think the very reason that I had psychosis in the first place is because I was disempowered in all of those areas. I was moving backwards. And the very moment that I started to move forwards in life was when I realized that I wasn't moving backwards. And this built this crazy determination in me 
that over the span of my life, I always wanted to be moving forwards in health, social, family, finance, career, intellect. That I wanted to build and grow these platforms through my years and my months and even my decades. And, you know, I can now look back on that moment as the transformational moment of my life. But I would never have had it if I didn't go through all of that suffering. Now, to bring this back around, I've now mentored and been involved with over a thousand different business owners. So I've spoken to them personally in depth about their businesses. I take anywhere from 10 to 15 phone calls with different business owners every single week. And I've been doing that for a very long time, close to seven years now. And during that time, what I've discovered is that everyone has a story. And it's funny because what I've found is that when I share my own story and I communicate what I've been through, there's so many people that I connect with in such a unique and new way in my business. I first started sharing it a few years ago and I thought that it might have a negative effect on my marketing and on my business and all of that kind of stuff, but it had the complete opposite. I told people, look, I'm a university dropout, ex-drug addict, drug dealing person with psychosis who was not mentally stable. Now, the bottom of the barrel is I went to the literally the bottom of the barrel. But the funny thing is my ability to share that with people today is where my power resides. And it's where all of my ability to serve lives, all everything. It's the essence of everything that I do. You think back to these movies that I'm talking about. Like you look at the Lord of the Rings, for example. I recently watched this. And if you look at that movie, it's like, what, what would that movie be if there wasn't that journey? Like if Frodo didn't have to go through all of that darkness and all of those things that he had to go through, that he just skipped to the end and he just throws the ring in the, in the mountain tomb. No one would care. And it's funny because I think we need suffering to create growth. We need voids to have values in life. And I think it's just a way the universe is working, is way it's functioning. Just like there's a breath, uh, every human being and many animals have a breath and we have the heartbeat and the tide and the cycles of the moon and the sun and the moon and all of these and the night and the day, all of these things seem to be this flux between light and shade or impression and expression. There's this beat that's happening in the universe. And I think if you can align to that beat, the rhythm of things, you're living in alignment with the universe and you can flow with it and you can rise through it and you can grow. Now, I wanted to share this, my story with you because this is one of the things that I see missing from most people's business. It's what I would call essence. It's that ability to go into the yin, you could say, and communicate where you've been to share your growth and your boons and the things that you've been able to do on the back end. If I just get up here and say, oh, I'm Ben and I've got lead flow and lead flow is awesome and we help clients and we make millions of dollars for our clients. Look, that's amazing and that's great. But there's no essence to that. There's nothing powerful in that. It's just words and stats. Whereas if I say, hey, this is my journey. I know you've been on a journey too. Let's not hide from it. Like, let's go through this together. You know, I really think as entrepreneurs, we are people who are more dedicated in life to giving our suffering meaning. That's all I think that we're doing is we're trying to find the best way to 
give all the things that we've been through meaning. And the thing that I've seen is the people who've had the the harshest circumstances often often have the best opportunities for growth if they can push through that. And what will end up happening is if you can be a leader and stand up and share your story and communicate that to your tribe and your audience and your leads and everyone that you're involved in or involved with, you are going to serve people at just such a higher level. You're going to be operating on a spiritual level because you are helping people to grow and move forwards. And that's this essence that I keep speaking about. So what I would encourage you to do during your time here with us on the Lead Flow podcast, you're going to be hearing some stories uh, from people who have experienced these heroes' journeys. Really tune into that and, and listen to what that's telling you. And think about your own hero's journey and think about how you might communicate that with your audience. A little tool around that. Never share something with the world until you've overcome it. So we'll take it back to these movies. How frustrated would you be if you were watching Star Wars and the movie just cut out halfway through? So like (laughs) we've gone through, Luke's uh, figured out that he's got these powers. Hopefully you've seen the Star Wars movies. And he meets his mentor, Obi-Wan Kenobi. And then he just gets defeated by Darth Vader. And that's it. The movie just cuts. You know, it doesn't actually give you the transition of the boon. And what this would do, everyone would hate it. It would be shocking. It would get smashed by the critics. So it's exactly the same. Is when you think about your business, you've got to apply those same principles. And when you think about storytelling, you've got to apply those principles. So one thing that I always say to my clients and my friends and anyone that I can tell is that Never share something with the world that you have not yet overcome. Because as human beings, we love the boon. The boon is what is the victory, the thing that you won from your journey. And once you have that, share it from that place. And that's how to communicate your story in the right way. And to know whether it's time to be able to do that. You see, if you don't do that, it can lead to a horrible results. It will have the anti-effect that you, you're going to want to have. So just keep that in mind as you're going through and sharing that uh, with your audience. Now, what we talk about a lot with Leadflow is it's about getting your customers and clients and prospects and leads to know you, like you, and trust you. Now, the like and trust factor... It's very easy to get someone to know you. Very, very easy. You just have to put something out in front of them. There is no collaboration when it comes to knowing someone. You can often have that forced upon you. But you can never have the like and trust factor forced upon you. That is the decision that your prospects, your leads, your customers, and your clients make. So what I'm really saying here is that By showing up as the real and authentic you and telling your hero's journey and thinking deeply about that and how that fits inside your ecosystem is the most valuable tool when it comes to the low, the no like and trust factor, because it's going to build it in the most realistic way. And so many people miss that. So many people miss that because of the fear of what's going to happen. What are my family and my friends going to think if I come out and say that this is what happened to me? And I would say you stand to gain so much more by actually showing up and sharing what actually went down than hiding stuff and just keeping it in the closet. Because carrying that baggage in your life, I really think the key to leadership and becoming a leader is owning the baggage in your life and making your private past equal your public present. And to the degree that you have the strength to do that is the degree that you will rise and the degree that people will see you as the leader and they will trust you because you got real. 
You got real with the circumstances you had and what you were given, and you had the capacity to push through and find the benefit in the suffering or in the drawbacks. So I'd really encourage you to take that on board. Now, obviously on the podcast, we're going to be talking about a various range of different things. But really, this is such a key piece. And in my view, it's actually the most important thing. It's to have that capacity. The essence of your business. Now, a call to action for you right now. Definitely check out the book, uh, The Hero with a Thousand Faces by Joseph Campbell. I think that will really serve you. If you're interested in this topic, definitely dive in there and check it out. In the show notes, uh, I've actually created a drawing of the hero's journey. I'll put that in the show notes as well. So check that out too. And last thing, if you are an individual that you have a story and you know that you want to share that story with more people and you're not sure how to structure it and you have an existing business and you're a bit worried about how that might work and what to do around that, reach out to us. Head to leadflow.ai, head to the website there and book a call uh, with me and my team. Just head through, there'll be a link there on the page. Book a call, let us know that you listen to the podcast and let us know that you'd love some help in structuring the delivery of that. And we're going to be able to help you to do that in the right way. And I'll ask you the right questions to make sure that you're ready and in the position to do that so that it becomes serviceable for you and your leads, your customers, your clients, your family, your friends, and every everyone in between. You never want to do this stuff if it's obviously not uh, beneficial. So that's really, really important. Just keep that in mind uh, as we go through. So that's leadflow.ai. Uh, if you want to have a chat to me, I'll, I'll make sure that's set up so you can have a chat to me on that. And I would love to help you on your journey. So that's it for the episode, guys. I will see you in the next episode. Talk soon. <music>